Should the Bears commit to Justin Fields long-term, or should they consider drafting a quarterback this offseason? Plus, Philly is falling in a huge Week 16 slate. We preview it right here on Locked On NFL. You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to a Wednesday edition of Locked On NFL. He is Chris Carter. I'm James Rapine. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow wherever you get your podcasts. And thank you so much for making us your first listen. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And Chris, let's dive into what is, uh, I think, a heck of a show, starting with a dilemma that the Chicago Bears are in. And they should have beat the Browns over the weekend, could have beat the Browns over the weekend. Woof. They did not beat the Browns over the weekend. They did and not. If they did, I think we would be talking about potential playoffs and all of those things. And instead... It goes right back to the Justin Fields dilemma. How do you feel? The the Browns are going to have the the uh, or the Bears, excuse me, are going to have the number one overall pick in the twenty twenty four NFL draft, barring something unforeseen from Carolina. Mm-hmm. They'll have another top pick in this draft, given where they're at in the draft order. Should they stick with Fields or should they move on and get one of these young guns? Listen, I think a big part of this is. How you, your your coaches your coaching situation is looking? I think a big part of this is how you think you can build your offense around Fields right now. I think right now you're in a position where you're not showing traction with this young quarterback, and you still need to invest a lot on your team right now. And if you're not sure that Justin Fields is the guy, you can't afford to pay him a super contract. In the future, in the near future, unless you unless you build something around him, and this was their chance to build something around him was the, with, the, with these past few couple of years to say, hey, let's go get let's go get some an offensive line, let's go get a couple of playmakers. And they certainly got some playmakers, like they, they got guys that are able to you know to make some splash plays on the offense, but they have not built a core that I could rely on right now. And so I I think they should explore the trade market because I think there's athletic value in Justin Fields when you see some of the plays that he makes, some of the throws that he makes, and it's not all on him like because like there's tons of plays where like there was a there's one play where he broke out the pocket threw a beautiful ball down down the field and it was just put, it was put in the chest of his target and they just dropped it and I feel like that should be an example like oh man so they could do something with him but the question for me right now for and for a lot of teams I think that the mo- the model that a lot of teams are following is get your quarterback young build a, a super squad around him as best as you can and win with that crew. And then if you keep your quarterback, then you try to try to build after that. But if you don't have that crew and you keep your quarterback, you're asking for a long term service of pain. And that's just where I don't think the Bears want to be. I think they should trade them, see what value they can get back. Use that first overall pick on whatever quarterback they want. Try again with a rookie quarterback. You have another five years to figure that out. But make sure that you get it right in the next go of having a young gun in, in your backfield. To me, it's it's pretty simple. If you think that there is a high end franchise quarterback with the number one overall pick, you take him. Yeah. It Justin Fields, as talented as he is, and he is talented, is sort of irrelevant in that decision. Yeah. And and the reason he's irrelevant is because uh, are you willing to pay him right now? It's it's in that weird in between that Daniel Jones type scenario where he's flashed some, and I think he's better than than. Daniel Jones, just because he's more athletic and, and he's shown a, a bit more, I think. But it's not like he's won a lot. And right. it's been a tough situation. And I'm not saying it's fair for Justin, but sometimes it isn't fair. And this is a chance for the Bears to get it right. This is why, if you're the Bears, you trade out of that top spot last year because you gave Fields another chance. You get tremendous value for the number one overall pick. By the way, they could have stand, stood pat and taken C.J. Stroud. Just throwing that out there. Find the next guy now that you have a DJ Moore, now that you have some pieces where you could get excited about it. And Fields has flashed enough, to your point. I think there will be teams interested. 
Not that you'll get a haul, but could you get a day two pick for Justin Fields? I think so. I think you could get a day two pick for Justin Fields. I think so. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I think there's teams out there that still think that he could be something. Listen, they're talking about that in Pittsburgh here right now. James. New Orleans. Yeah. yeah. I, if if you don't have a Atlanta? franchise quarterback right now. Atlanta? Could be. I, you know, I, I actually like the fit in Atlanta. That actually could be really interesting with B. John Robinson. That could be real, that could that could be really fun to fun to watch Ooh. there. But I also think that part of it is is a team a quarterback away that, that that's getting him from becoming a, a problem. I, I think the Saints really fit that model right now. Um, that they, I, and I, I wonder because the way that they play right now, their defense is tough. They still got Alvin Kamara. Um, there there could be there could be something there. You know the Steelers are an interesting position because you know I'm I'm of the mood that like where they're at with Kenny Pickett like sure he's injured right now and you could say that he can he should get another chance without Matt Canada but my my opinion on quarterback is that if you don't have the franchise guy you need to take as many shots as you can at legitimate franchise guys until you find the franchise guys because if you hit it one time you're good for the next ten to fifteen years and that's where you can start to you can start to build for your future so. I think that if you're drafting a quarterback, that's one thing because you're giving yourself time to build that guy. But when you're when you're trading for a quarterback who's into his rookie deal and about to end his rookie deal um, and is going to have to get paid soon, that's a different set of circumstances. And I think that that's uh, that's where the Bears need to see if they can find a suitor to get to get some trade value back. Because if you get this next quarterback right, but if you say you get you know Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jane Daniels, one of those guys. Uh, with and you can even trade back from the first overall pick. He's like, you know, what? we don't need Caleb Williams. We want this guy d- down the line. That that's fine, and make, as long as you recoup real great draft value for it. Um, but doing that on the way there is going to be crucial for building because they still have so much to put together as as a franchise. That's why I think that it would be right for them to move Justin Fields at the end of this season, see what they can get back for it, and then keep trying to build a nucleus uh, on their team. If I'm the Bears, I try to find move mountains to find a way, and they obviously have draft assets beyond this mm-hmm. year mm-hmm. to get their top quarterback, whoever they think is the best quarterback. And, and maybe not because they've picked Mitch Trubisky in the top two, and that was just an awful decision at the time, and it, it didn't work out. So maybe it's not the top quarterback on their board, but the best quarterback in this draft, whoever it is. Just saying I don't necessarily trust them. But get that top quarterback, get Marvin Harrison Jr. How can you do it? Find the way to do that mm, mm. with DJ Moore, and that then would be you let, crazy. and then you let the young QB cook, and and that's probably me. It means a, a trade up. It, you take the quarterback at one, or maybe, maybe not. Maybe you get your your top quarterback, which isn't Caleb Williams. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is a Drake May. Maybe it's it's one of these Jaden Daniels. But get that guy and find a way to get Marvin Harrison Jr. That could mean a trade down from one. I think that's unlikely. Or it could mean a trade up from their pick, since they have the Panthers pick as well. That would be my strategy mm. if I was running the the Bears. And not that it's realistic. Who knows if you can get them. Yeah. But I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably the third or fourth pick. So can you get there? If so, can you imagine? That, that I mean, that's crazy. a hell of a lineup. You, that would you be crazy. Top quarterback, DJ Moore, Marvin Harrison Jr. That would be insane. I, and and you know what? The Texans made, you know, had had, had a similar opportunity recently uh, when they were able to get C.J. Stroud and uh, who's the defensive player that they got at the top of the draft. I forget right now. Will um, Anderson. Will yeah. Anderson. When, 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 yeah. And they moved like, up. Yeah. It, 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 there, there's an opportunity for that with one and five that the, that the Bears have have right now with their with their picks. So I, I wouldn't rule something like that out. Uh, and I know there's some there's some people there's some diehard Buckeye fans in the Midwest just say just get Marvin Harrison to Justin Fields and he'll be great. And I, but I really think that it's it's it, there's so much to build. Like if you look at this team, they need multiple positions in the offensive line to address, multiple positions on the defense to address, and a wide receiver. And if you pay Justin Fields soon, it's going to be that much harder to get those positions. Uh, so I'm, I'm right with you. Use use the two of those two of those picks that you have in the top five of the draft right now to revamp everything um, and see if Justin Fields can help you recoup an extra day two pick, and then you're and then you could be cooking with gas. Totally agree. I think they could put themselves in position to be a contender in years to come from 
the Bears to another NFC team that we do consider a contender, but they're flopping a little bit. The Philadelphia Eagles. We will dive into Jalen Hurts and company coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy the way it should be. The largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, and it's simple. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And you can combine sports, which is awesome. So you could take LeBron James more than and Travis Kelsey at more than on a combo of 10 and a half three pointers made plus receptions, which is really, really cool. That's why I love prize picks. And maybe you're alive in your daily or in your season long fantasy leagues. Maybe you're not but prize picks is going to spice up your NFL watching, certainly your sports watching. So check them out today at prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Let's get back rolling here in the Locked On NFL podcast. Chris Carter, James Rapine. We just talked about Justin Fields. Let's talk about something kind of stems off of the Monday Night Football game. Uh, our guys on Tuesday touched on, touched on this, but I want to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles with you, James, because at one point Nick Sirianni had this team on fire. They were looking like they're they're going to win the NFC. They're going to run away with the NFC. Even when like as at one point the Niners were faltering, they were they were dropping in the middle part of the year. Uh, but they've since fi figured it out. But if you're the Eagles right now, where are you standing? Because you're now zero and three for in in your last three games since December. This is not the right time to be falling apart and losing and losing crucial games. If if you're if you're the Eagles right now, because now they're in a position where they at one point had the one seed. They are gonna they're 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 still in, in contention for the NFC East, but they're that the one seed is gonna go to the Niners right now. And they certainly have three opponents that they could get right against. They got two games against the Giants, they got a game against the Cardinals. Those can be some get right games, but the Seahawks were probably your last like real test of a of a real playoff opponent before you get to the playoffs. And you, you found a way to squander that game after getting demolished by the Cowboys and the Niners in in recent weeks. Are the Eagles in trouble right now, James? Or do you think they just had a couple bad games and that they're going to be bouncing back real soon? I think they need to get Jalen Hurts healthy, however that is, however you can. And I, one thing I hated on Monday Night Football is the fact that they just need a field goal yeah, And with 12 seconds to go, you take the deep shot. And all of those routes were deep. It's not like he had anything underneath to go to. And so that's not helping Jalen Hurts' cause, especially when you have timeouts. But I digress. Anyways, yeah. I, I think I, this team, I think they'll win their next three. I do. You're right. They're winnable games. They'll finish 13-4. and four. But will that be a mirage? Will the, their lack of quality opponents down the stretch mask what has been a bad football team over the past few weeks? I think health is the biggest key. Can you be 13 and four? If so, I think you're probably winning the division. Who knows? Maybe you, you, you get the edge on, on San Francisco, but I doubt they flounder enough for that to happen, even if they do lose this week to, to Baltimore. Big matchup we'll get to. So you're probably looking at the a division win if you can handle the next three and, and, and leapfrog the Cowboys again. But yeah, it's it's weird. Because you, you think about the, this whole season for the Eagles, and they started off, they were winning, but it was kind of shaky. And then they look like the dominant Eagles again. Mm -hmm. a, a, and now they're, they're kind of floundering in midair. And the only thing I can blame it on is health, because I'm not sure what else it is from an offensive standpoint. On defense, they can't cover anything. Yeah. And it, that's... I, that's concerning in a passing league. How are you going to cover? Well, the teams you face in the playoffs, they're going to throw it. Dak Prescott's going to throw it. The, the 49ers are obviously going to throw it. They even throw it to the best running back in the league. So they throw it. And, and that is a big concern with this Eagles defense. What I, I think they need is that defensive line needs to be dominant. And yeah. They haven't been dominant up to this point. 
I also want to get your, your your opinion on this. Did you see Jalen Hurts' post game comments? I did. Yes, I did. The, the, say, saying that they the team needs needs to be committed, and it's yeah. not committed enough right now. And saying that yep. he doesn't have he doesn't have a dictionary on what he wants. And I, I think a lot of people look at that and they're like, "What does that mean? Is he calling out the coaching? Is he calling out the team? Is he calling out the players?" And then meanwhile, you look at how he's performed in the last three games. He hasn't thrown a touchdown. He's thrown two interceptions. He has six hundred and thirty eight passing yards. Um, and, and listen, I like Jalen Hurts a lot. I liked him in college. I loved his story of, you know, of sticking with Alabama as long as he did. And then, you know, coming back in the SEC championship game with him, go what he did at Oklahoma. I, I, I enjoy watching him play in the NFL, but do you, you look at, you listen to, to that. And I think that that guy, he's a leader. He's a guy that, that, that has become a leader in Philly. But I, I do wonder when a guy says something like that, it could be mean one of two things. It could mean he's the kick in the butt that, that, that this team needs, and he can be the guy that sets the tone and says, hey, we get behind me. We have to do better here. We have to st- turn things up because we cannot be playing like this a- in January. Otherwise, we're going to be one and done in the playoffs. Or he could be the guy that everyone looks at and says, buddy, you're part of the problem why, why we, we haven't been playing well. And then everyone starts pointing fingers inward. And then the and then there's a there's a the, the collapse continues because right now I agree with you like they could win out with these last three games and if they do I think they could still claim the NFC East because you look at the Cowboys schedule they got the Dolphins they're in Miami this week then they're then they're against the Lions the week after they finish against the Commanders that they should win that one but those are two tough games they got to handle and they and they're head to, they're and they're neck and neck with the Eagles right now so I could easily see the Eagles winning out and the Cowboys even just dropping one. And that'd be enough for the Eagles to win the division. By the way, they'd be the first back-to-back NFC East division winner, I think ever. And since they, since they reconstituted the NFC East, um, because it's, but it's changed hands every year. But um, I just, I look at this and I think like, man, Jalen hurts his comments that, 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 that puts, that, that puts like a little bit of alarm in the back of my head. It's like something's going on there and it's bigger than just they're, they're making mistakes in the wrong moments. Yeah, I wonder if it's as simple as they've not responded the way he would hope to mm-hmm. losing in general. And he's used to winning, of course. He won plenty at Alabama, won plenty at Oklahoma, and has been a winner in the NFL. And maybe they're just kind of Zion Williamson voice lackadaisical about their <laughs> uh, about the 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 losses and just thinking that they can trot out there and, and be the Eagles and win. And in the NFL it doesn't work that way. Even against Drew Locke. It does not. And we saw that on Monday night. And I Drew do Locke. think Hertz is a a great leader. He's a winner like I mentioned. And so it, my bet would be he did that. It was very calculated. And it was something he was probably feeling ahead of that game. And heck, he was battling a sickness. He's been playing through a knee injury, and he's been out there. And maybe he feels like that that some of these guys haven't been as all in or at least focused after losing and responding the right way. So we'll see if they respond the right way. I, I will say this. I think they still have a ton of talent. Mm-hmm. They could win the Super Bowl still. I'm not burying the Eagles. No, of course not. But But it is – this is kind of a rubber meets the road type of scenario where – one, you got to get the next three. You can't be messing yeah. around with the Giants. Yeah. You can't play with no. your food with the Cardinals. You, you got to smash those teams and then go into the, the playoffs on a roll because really, if you're going to make it to a, a second straight Super Bowl, you got to win the next six games. Yeah. Put it that way. Because th- these next three are obviously winnable, like we mentioned, and then you'll have three playoff games before Super Bowl 58 if they get there. Yeah, I'm right with you. That's that's where I'm at with the, with this team. If they don't, if if they lose one of these next three, I think it put it puts a lot of doubt in this team. And then when they get to and, and as it stands, first of all, if they lose one of these next three, they'd be at risk of being the five seed in the playoffs. Uh, mm-hmm. And then they'd be going on the road to play the Buccaneers, uh, presumably who'd win the NFC South if things you know shook out the way that they are right now. Um, and I'm not so sure how they do in that situation because the Buccaneers. Baker Mayfield's playing better right now. Their defensive front's playing a little bit better right now. They could, and the way that you're playing at the Eagles, I wouldn't guarantee that as something that they could just waltz in and and just get done. Uh, because they, they, if they thought that, that's what they should. That's what they how they lost to Drew Locke in in Seattle. So, um, yeah, I'm of the mind that the Eagles, 
they need they need to look around at each other. If Jay, if Jalen Hurts is right, they all got to be accountable. They have the talent to get there. I think that they are still one of the more talented teams across the entire NFL. But this could be looked at as a wasted year. And if this if they if they end up blowing this, I do wonder where this franchise goes from here because I think a lot of people thought with the way that they started this year and the way that they made it to the Super Bowl last year, oh, they have a chance to set themselves up. When you know, when a couple Super Bowls in the next few years, and I think there could be a lot of big questions being asked if they don't get back to it this year. But this week, there's a lot of big games. We'll talk about those big games on the other side of this break here on the Locked On NFL podcast. But first, I want to remind you that this show is sponsored by Game Time, we're buying t- tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful because game time is the fast and easy way that you can buy tickets for all the sports music comedy and theater events near you they give you killer deals on last minute tickets and they have a best price guarantee that cannot be beat so you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you're about to have game time is an app you can also download to your phone and it's a much better experience when you're scrambling for tickets on your way to a big game a big concert that you've been that you've been waiting for and listen i get it sometimes you're looking there and you say you know what those prices aren't right i'm gonna wait until a little bit before this concert i'm gonna wait to the day of this concert and i can see what kind of great prices i can get but then you get there and you feel like ah that the, the the ticket booth is doing give me justice here ah these scalpers i don't i can't trust these 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 tickets that they're giving me even though i love these prices game time is where you get the best of both worlds because you'll see the view from those seats on the on the game time app so that you can know that you're not getting scammed out your money and again you're getting a deal every single time because you can see that you're getting the best prices in, in all the in, the in the comparison and again game time I'm so confident they're getting you the best prices. They have a best price guarantee where if you find tickets in the same section in a row for less somewhere else, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference in the Game Time app. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase, or go to their website, GameTime.co. Terms and conditions apply. Create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Chris, let's get to these week 16 matchups. And oh, it is loaded. And we've already mentioned a few of them. The game of the week for me is on Monday night and, and on oh, day night, 815 Eastern. Who we is right. Ravens, 49ers, a lot of fantasy football semifinal <laughs> game. We'll be hanging in the balance. Think about all those Christian McCaffrey, Brock Purdy, Debo Sam, yeah. Brandon Ayuk, Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Jackson. Um, yeah, you, you, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. If you're starting, him. Yeah, you, it's a little harder with the Ravens of fantasy. <laughs> well, I was gonna say Mark Andrews, and then I was like, Nah, Keaton He's Mitchell, out. Hurt. Yeah, yeah. Hurt. So, so Zay there's, Flowers there's has there. been sneaky. He's he's helped me in, in, a, in a couple leagues. Zay Flowers certainly, and um, what's the oh uh, the the. Uh, Isaiah Likely. I was going to say the rookie tight end. Isaiah Likely will be in some. He, he, this week too. He, it, it, there's been so he's been a really good waiver wire pickup. Question to you, James: Is this a Super Bowl preview? It. They're the two best teams today. It's a good. That, I think it's a great way to put it. That that is is where I'm at. There's no doubt about it. I know some dismiss the Brock Purdy MVP hype. It, whatever you want to say about him, fine. I'm not here to argue about MVP. I really couldn't yeah. care. Yeah. Uh, less about it because there's still plenty of games to go and I think it can change. But what I will say is that dude is balling mm-hmm. and that offense is a lot of fun to watch. And on the flip side, Lamar Jackson is balling mm-hmm. and those Ravens are a problem. And whether it's Roquan Smith on defense, whether it's Lamar Jackson on offense where he utilizes the tight ends and who knows where they find that explosive runner with no Keaton Mitchell. I thought he was an interesting Brought an interesting dynamic to that offense. But, yeah, I think they're the two best teams today. Wouldn't shock me if this is the start of a downturn for one of them because these big matchups take a toll. But, man, I can't wait to watch this one because this is these are the two top teams in their respective conferences right now. I agree. Uh, and I think it's going to be it's going to be a big a big matchup. This used to be the Harbaugh Bowl when you think about it back in the day, uh, <laughs> which is kind of, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, but um, but yeah, I love this this matchup and it's Christmas night. This will be after I've eaten a lot of food and given out a lot of gifts. So I'm looking forward to that one. But Christmas Eve, mm-hmm. I'm looking 
I'm looking at Cowboys Dolphins, man, because those are two intriguing teams right now with the way that they're playing. And at one point, they were both kind of very similar to me because they were beating up on all the little teams, all the teams that had losing records, and then just getting folded by all the good teams that they played. Now they've both gotten some games under their belt where you could say, like, okay, those are good. You know, if, they, if this was college football, those are good resume builder wins. But now you have a chance. Both are in a position where they're fighting for their division. The Dolphins need to watch their backs because the Bills are coming strong. And if the Dolphins finish weak here, that could be that could be that could be a tough situation that they're in right now. Meanwhile, the Cowboys they have they, they have missed out on the opportunity to take the lead from the Eagles during their zero and three stretch here, and now the Eagles have three easy games here. But I love both of the, these teams the way that they're playing the way that they're playing going into this game. This could be a a, a huge matchup here that also determines uh, you know some some one some potential one seed races uh, in either conference. There is no doubt that this is this could be a fireworks show yeah. we could see 70 points in this game uh, I, I could also see if tyreek hill can't play mm -hmm. the dallas cowboys just rolling yeah and I, I think that having tyreek back for this game is huge i think it being in miami is a big deal too and so i think the dolphins have a shot here a, a real shot even though that's a really good Pass rush for Dallas. That defense is opportunistic. They'll probably force some turnovers. But I can't wait to see it because this is a chance for Miami to show everyone, Chris, that they are legit, that they should yeah. be considered one of these top teams in the AFC. Mm -hmm. Because I I think they have the potential to be, but I'm not there yet with them, and yeah. especially with the uncertainty around Tyreek. Speaking of uh, fantasy football hopes, Tyreek, please play yeah. and, be, and be close to 100%. My man, I, please play. <laughs> I, I was kind of serious with my tone there. Please, Tyreek, if you can play, play. Um, but there, there are some other good matchups too, Chris. I mean, Jags Bucks, yeah, is good. Saints Rams on Thursday night football is is the best Thursday night game we've had in quite some time, which Jeez. isn't saying much. But man, I'm right. excited for it because at least it's two teams with 500 records, and I love, absolutely love the way the Rams are playing right now. I mean, they mm -hmm. gave Baltimore everything they could handle. Obviously, they handled business this past week, and they're at home, which is, to me, a huge edge because playing in New Orleans is always that Superdome is, is one tough. of the loudest buildings in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And you're on, and you're, you're you're forcing New Orleans to go to the West Coast. I think that's another advantage that you yeah. that, that you can claim there. Uh, Thursday night football is going to be crazy this week. Also, another game to, to look out for: the Browns at the Texans. <sighs> That's Ooh. that has a lot of wild card implications, and I mean that I means as do the Steelers, Steelers and the Bengals, because whoever wins the Steelers Bengals game is going to be looking at is going to be looking at that Browns Texans game like okay, who's going to drop? Because the Texans they're right in the wild card chase, but also the Texans are in the AFC South race, which puts makes the Jaguars game more relevant, and that's that's what's so crazy about this weekend is if the Jaguars lose to the Bucks. And the Texans beat the Browns. The Texans are in the are, are now a, a the leading the AFC South, and that could be a nightmare situation uh, for uh, for for the for the Jaguars, who at one point were running away with the division, and on and would now be in a really tough spot. And the the Texans they get to play the Titans and the Colts to finish the, to finish the season uh, with a chance to close out and win the division with a rookie quarterback. And the Jaguars. They they close out. They got the Panthers and the Titans after the Buccaneers, so they also have a not so you know tough schedule to finish out. But it could very well be be determined by who gets the edge this week uh, with the opponents that they have, because these are probably maybe the two toughest opponents that either of them might play to, uh, uh, going into the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. There's th there's a lot up for grabs. The, the AFC playoff race is as wild as I remember it being ever, <laughs> ever. Because there are so many teams that have eight wins or seven wins. Yep. And you could end up, there could be a team or two with 10 wins that don't get in. And that's insane. Yep. But that, that's where we're at right now. And because of tiebreakers, I could totally see that. I uh, I, I will say I am happy about one thing, Chris. Mm. And, and, and not that I was rooting against him. It would have been a cool story. But at least we can put to bed the, you know, Aaron Rodgers might come back. <laughs> he might come back. Hey, did you see him throw? They activated. Now the Jets, their playoff hopes yeah, are they, gone. They, they can stop that. 
I, and Aaron, get ready for 2024. I hope you ball out next year. I hope you're awesome. This way you're not taking that risk because my Lord, that it, it was just a few months ago. It was still insane to me yeah. that that was being discussed. Yeah, it, I I think that that was that was just a a wild a wild ride there. But I'm right with you. Like it's not even about rooting against Aaron Rodgers or the Jets. I think it's just like that. Don't make no sense to put that dude after out out that out there that soon. I don't care what doctors say. Get get him a whole year to. And he's it. It also be different if he was you know 25. You know, but that dude, that dude is is older than both of us, and he's out there. He's out there trying to come back. I just I, I think and, and on a team that wasn't going to be doing anything anyway. So I'm, I'm glad that we have. Put, put that to bed here but like you said there's 11 teams who have a legitimate claim to a a, a shot at the playoffs right now uh you know <laughs> and that is that is insane to insane to think there um you know i, I think there's you, you could say there's 11 teams in the nfc but about two of those teams are already got eight eight losses and i think that that, that might be get settled soon I'm not so sure that the AFC playoffs get settled after after this weekend. I think that there's there's going to be some teams that are going to be on the outside looking in, but a lot of these teams still play each other in in the in the coming weeks. When you look at how things uh, how things could could line could line up for for you, uh, like for example, the Browns and the Bengals play each other at the, at the end of the season. Um, how is that? How is that going to impact things? Well, the Browns have locked a wild card spot by then. They're not catching the Ravens, but the way that they're playing right now. They've been able to beat the Jaguars, and they pulled off a miraculous comeback against the Bears. Um, if they beat the Texans, they could be star- they could be staring at a really good chance to be the five seed in the playoffs. And you know, and with on with Joe Flacco at quarterback, who would have thought that would 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 have happened at the start at the start of the year? Um, and then meanwhile, the Bengals, if the Bengals do their job and beat and beat the Steelers right you know, going into this week, they're going to be pushing for for one of those playoff spots. Uh, and this the Steelers in the same spot. The Steelers they're in just in a state of free fall right now, covering that team. Uh, that's going to be a wild thing, wild thing to watch if they can win any game down the stretch right now with the injuries that they have, the lack of confidence that they have. There's a whole bunch of problems going on in Pittsburgh. But uh, you know, I think the the another team that we were talking about earlier this month, or when we when we did one of our earlier shows, the Broncos, they were coming on real mm-hmm. strong. They seem yep. to have cool, cooled off now. Um, if there's a team that's not in the playoff picture officially right now, so Ravens, Dolphins, Chiefs, Jaguars, Browns, Bengals, Colts, those are the seven playoff teams right now. Is it just the Bills that you think that you you better not let this team get into the playoffs or it's going to be a lot of problems for the rest of y'all? Yeah, I, I think the Bills reminded everybody how good they are mm-hmm. this past week and said, oh, well, we can win running the ball and playing through our running back. And <laughs> James whew. Cook being like, I I, I told y'all, I told y'all. <laughs> he, he said, I'm the best cook. Mm-hmm. He, he said, I'm the chef. And uh, chef. look, he looked, he looked like it. I think... The Bills reminded everyone that, and that's why I stopped short of saying, oh, well, Baltimore is the best team in the AFC or, or, or going to be a Super Bowl preview. The Bills are one of those teams that I thought of. Like, you never know. It just takes getting hot and winning three games, and and the Bills could certainly do that. I, I think they're going to be a playoff team when you look at their schedule. So yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We will be covering it every single day, five times a week here on Locked On NFL. Obviously, Chris and I are every single Wednesday, so follow – Wherever you get your podcast, subscribe on YouTube. And for Chris Carter, I'm James Rapine. Thank you so much for listening to the Locked On NFL Podcast.